Well, she has a number of honorary degrees and the Order of Canada. Susan Point's work is displayed right across the coast and around the world. And now there's a gorgeous coffee table book all about her art and her. Welcome Susan Point along with author and honored curator of art and history, Robert Watt. Hello to you both. Thanks for Good being us. here. Thank you. Susan, how did you get into art? Well, right from childhood, I've always been interested in art. Um, but I got married young, and I had to work, go to work. But I worked for years as a secretary for a, a First Nations organization. And being on maternity leave for that short period of time, um, I, I ha finally had the chance to do something that I always wanted to do, and that was um, create art. Um, when I start, and then I started shortly thereafter working, doing limited edition screen prints. But um, at that time, I, all I had space to do this was on my kitchen table. So if you notice, the very first limited edition prints that I did do were very limited. I may have started with 50 sheets of paper, but ended up with 20. So the edition came out, uh, would end up being 20. Um, and that's how I started into doing um, limited edition prints. But you know, and then having my fourth child, a little girl, um, it was getting a little too caustic with the fumes and everything. And I, I had to move from there. Um, my husband built a, a little workshop in the basement. But even still, it was still too um, caustic from the fumes. Mm -hmm. Your art <coughs> is epic. I mean, in terms of the, the publicness of it, um, YVR, I'm thinking whenever you fly in from anywhere in the world, come into Canada, your art is displayed, beautiful carvings all over the, the airport. Your work is on the side of police cars. Um, it's, it's so here in the public sphere in, along the coast. Why is public art so important to you? Public, public art, I think, is something that I enjoy doing because, you know, everyone gets to enjoy it. And it basically sets our Salish footprint, mm. you know, upon the lands once again, that we, which it, um, Salish art was a, an almost lost art form at one point in time, which when I, is when I first started. Mm. I want to ask you, Robert, um, what's your favorite piece in this book? So Susan talked a moment ago about um, her art being uh, inspirational in a number of ways, but particularly because it reestablishes a Salish aesthetic presence, uh, not only in our city, but beyond. Mm. So, and this is important too, because um, this is the first time that Salish art uh, was uh, placed again in the spot where the Salish people lived for thousands of years. Mm. And, um, but, but for me, it's important for all those reasons, but also because um, it's, uh, the art is just fabulous. The inspiration, the different symbols, <coughs> the beauty of the carving, the coloring, all those things speak about uh, Susan's achievement and her vision for bringing uh, Salishness to life again. Mm. So, What's it like for you to have this book written about you and your art and your life? Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> at this, well, I never ever thought, you know, I would ever get to a point of actually <laughs> doing a book. You know, I mean, it was never my intention. It was to create art because I love, enjoy, I love and enjoy doing art. And uh, when Rob approached me many years ago, <laughs> 15 years ago maybe, about doing a book, you know, I thought, well, we'll go for it. But, you know, I never ever thought that I'd have um, this opportunity. I, I mean, you're a pretty well-known, I would say even famous um, artist in Canada. Um, I would say you're a role model for Indigenous people, uh, including artists. What message would you have to say a young indigenous woman who's you know really trying to get to the level where you are today? That, that's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it took me a lot of uh, research in order to mm. exactly understand what Salish art was, um, the elements they used in creating their work. Um, 
I would say to young up and coming artists is, you know, they have to do the research mm -hmm. to understand what they're actually doing and just work hard at it, you know, keep drawing. I mean, that's the only thing you can do, you know, I mean, if it's in, within your heart to do something, it'll come out on paper. I think that's the difference between Indigenous and non-Indigenous art is that I don't know if everybody understands that within like for Northwest Coast art, for example, there's a formula, there's uh, a template. You can't just, it's not free form, free expression. Like you said, like the research component of it is central to honoring the stories and honoring the integrity of our art. Exactly. Um, how do you want people to to see this book? What do you want people to get out of it? I'll ask that to both of you. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think for me, one of my big hopes is that um, with this book, people can explore on their own. They can go mm. to the many, many places in the city and they can find Susan's work. Because I kept bumping into people who, who I would say, do you know her work? And they say, well, her name is familiar, but tell me a piece. Mm. And then often, of course, I would talk about the um, pieces at YBR mm -hmm. that you've referred to. And they would say right away, oh, that's hers. And I'd say, absolutely, that and so much more. Mm -hmm. And then I'd mention the manholes. Have you ever seen one of her manholes? Right. Oh, that's you. And then you talked about the, the uh, symbol, uh, the Thunderbird symbol that she designed for the front bumpers of the police cars in Vancouver. So um, I hope that people come to recognize um, what a fabulous artist we have in our midst. What about you? What do you want people to take from this book? I, I mean, one thing that strikes me when you're talking is this is almost like a guidebook to Vancouver <laughs> through yeah. Susan's eyes. It is, exactly. You know, that's a really good point. It's a guidebook, yeah, throughout Vancouver and um, Canada and the U.S. and beyond. But um, I just hope people um, uh, enjoy, uh, you know, the stories I have behind each of the individual pieces that I've worked on throughout uh, this book. And every piece I do, everything uh, has a meaning behind it, you know, whether it's um, based on experience, whether it's from camping or, you know, going to my son's property in Quinell or sitting in my backyard. And everything has a story behind it and has a true meaning. You know, it's, um, and people have to understand that uh, what I do here is, is not necessarily traditional. Mm. The sailor shirt is very contemporary. <laughs> And I've done it in my own, I've done it, you know, I've changed drastically into my own style. Beautiful. Well, thank you both for, for joining me today and uh, congratulations on such an incredible work. Thank you very much. Thank you.